Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Now... Some of you may not have noticed, but I'm a comedian. And, uh... It's right there on my taxes. And... As such, I've got a lot of comedy idols, many of whom I've had the honor to meet thanks to this job right over there. Steve Martin, uh, John Cleese, Elmo. <laughs> he just tickles me. <laughs> but I've got a new comedy idol. Thank you. And my new comedy idol is Volodymyr Zelensky. Now, normally, he was a comedian. Very successful comedian for many years. Normally... Normally, I'm against electing comedians to political office. And keep in mind, I ran for president twice. <laughs> but this guy is inspiring the world with his courage in the face of the Russian invasion. And last night, he took his bravery to a brand new level of badassery. In a speech to the Ukrainian people, he declared that despite numerous assassination attempts against him in just the last two weeks, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> Now I will say one thing. I stay here. I stay in Kyiv, on Benkova Street. I'm not hiding, and I'm not afraid of anyone. That is so brave. I am personally inspired by his example. And I just want to see Vladimir Putin. I'm not afraid of you either. If you're looking for this comedian, I'm at the Ed Sullivan Theater on Broadway in Manhattan. <laughs> Five hours ago, <laughs> we pre-taped the show. My name, sir, and write this down, is James Corden. <laughs> this was the first time... I don't care! <laughs> I'm putting it out there! Yeah. This was the first time since the invasion that Zelensky addressed the nation from his presidential office, but he started with a West Wing-style walk-and-talk. Boys. Here is the evening, Kyiv. Our office. Monday, evening. You know, we used to say, Monday is a hard day. There is a war in the country, so every day is Monday. Beautiful and relatable words. Of course, Zelensky didn't write that himself. He's quoting famed Ukrainian poet, Garfieldomir Dukatsky. <laughs> Zelensky, people love big Garfieldomir fans. Big fans. Zelensky has begged the Western powers to ramp up the economic pain on Russia. And this morning, Joe Biden dished out the biggest dose yet. Today, I'm announcing the United States is targeting the main artery of Russia's economy. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. Take that, Vlad. America doesn't need your klepto crude. America, America is perfectly happy to stay home and frack ourselves blind. <laughs> this is another massive blow to the Russian economy, and Biden reminded Americans just how much damage we've done to them already. The Russian ruble is now down to 50 percent. By 50 percent since Putin's announced his war, one ruble is now worth less than one American penny. One ruble is less than one American penny. And let me tell you, Jackoff. That one penny. No, no. I'm serious. I'm not joking here. That penny, we, it ain't worth it used to be. Okay, back in Scranton in, in 19 off, forget about it. A shiny, a shiny Abe would get you two tickets to see the Rialto for a talky old Chucky Chaplin giving the Kaiser the what for with the old good plenties. <laughs> you still have... <laughs> still have enough left over to go to Luncheonette to have a hearty bowl of twine soup. More and more, more and more companies are saying net to doing business in Russia. The latest is McDonald's, which earlier today announced they're temporarily closing restaurants and pausing all operations in Russia. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Russia just became a no-fry zone. <laughs> now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hitting them hard. Now Russians will be forced to do the unthinkable. Dine at Russian Arby's. We have the beats. 
The lash out. <laughs> yeah. Crispy curls and coke. Crispy curls and coke. Curls and coke. Uh, to lash out at a reasonable world that hates Putin's grotesque war crimes, yesterday, Russia released a list of unfriendly countries, including Australia, Great Britain, Canada, South Korea, and the United States. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Not an unfriendly list. This is the most devastating attack since Fidel Castro put JFK in his burn book. <laughs> Meow. Wow. And it's not, it's not just the major powers. Putin's list also includes tiny countries like Andorra, San Marino, and Micronesia. <laughs> That's true what they say. The enemy of my enemy is Micronesia. <laughs> In addition... Wow. Thank you. Thank you very That's much. Fantastic. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> we, we want a Peabody. In addition... <laughs> In addition to being awesome, classifying a country as unfriendly is also an economic maneuver allowing the Russian government companies and citizens to temporarily pay foreign debts in rubles. No! Not rubles! Rubles are worthless now. This is like when your neighbor breaks your lawnmower and then tries to pay you back in Dave bucks. It's not money if I can only use it in your house, Dave. <laughs> Zelensky's not the only inspiring Ukrainian out there. Ordinary people there have given us so many images of hope amid the hardship, like this video of a little girl in a bomb shelter in Kyiv singing the Russian version of Let It Go. That little girl is amazing. She is. That's incredible. That is... That's incredible. She's the only person on the planet who could make every parent I know say, let's listen to Let It Go again. <laughs> She's also incredibly brave. She is risking the anger of the only force scarier than the Russian army, Disney lawyers. <laughs> They'll find you. They will find you. <laughs> The policy in Ukraine is that while men aged 18 to 60 need to stay and fight, women and children can leave. But as the war escalates, more women are returning to the fight as well. Like this group of moms who had a very tough message for Russia. We are women of Ukraine. We have blessed our men to protect our land. We have already taken our children to safety. We join the men and the Ukrainian army. Putin, you done messed up now. <laughs> you made the mom mad. You made mom mad. You can't make mom mad. That is too dangerous. Nobody, everybody knows, yeah. everybody knows don't make moms mad. Moms were built for conflict. They can find anything. They can eat dinner under 20 seconds and they know exactly what you're doing even if you're upstairs and completely silent. <laughs> if they use Putin's middle name, it is over. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, you get down here right now, young man. <laughs> Because I have an AK-47, and I will shoot you in the face. <laughs> it's fitting uh, to watch that video on International Women's Day. And invasion or not... <laughs> and invasion or not, the men of Ukraine are still marking the occasion. Today, by the way, is the 8th of March, and this is the Women's Day. The, the, the day is pretty mm -hmm. much very a lot celebrated in Ukraine. And today, the, some men from the Territorial Defense Unit, they came to the bomb shelter with a lot of flowers. The guys just brought it to, to us. That's beautiful. Flowers in the middle of a war zone. American men, American men, you got to step it up. <laughs> the women in your life will no longer be satisfied with your traditional gift for International Women's Day, saying, hey, turns out there's an International Women's Day. Are you... <laughs> Are you international? You're national, right? You're not international. I didn't miss anything, did I, right? Because you, you live here. <laughs> so many Ukrainian citizens are doing their part to resist Putin's aggression. Case in point, over the weekend, when an advisor to the Ukrainian government tweeted, in Kyiv, a woman knocked down a Russian drone from a balcony with a jar of cucumbers. <laughs> How did they expect to occupy this country? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ukrainian... Ukrainian grandmothers. 
Ukrainian grandmothers have we weaponized pickles, and they're not gherking around. Here's the dilio messing with Ukraine, and they will relish the opportunity to hit you with a pickle spear, or even worse, drop a tactical cuke. Ah. Yeah. Cornishon. <laughs> One wrinkle, nobody was able to verify the pickle story. And a lot of people wrote it off as an urban legend, but then the Ukrainian news site Liga.net did the Pulitzer and Pickle-worthy journalism and tracked the woman down. It turns out, sadly, the story was not true. The woman wants to set the record straight. Those were not pickled cucumbers. She actually knocked down the Russian drone with a jar of pickled tomatoes. <laughs> tomatoes. Which means I gotta update my jokes. Putin's never gonna catch up when the beef steaks <laughs> are this high. There's marinari a chance he can stop the air looming insurgency. It's time to show him the Pomodoro so he can bruschette out of here. Tomato, tomato, invado, ivado. He should just call the whole war off. <laughs> We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are John C. Riley and Broadway star Kristen Chenoweth. But when we come